Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I want to go ahead and shout out Anna Alicia 7 on Twitter. She was one of the first ones to let me know about what went down in Seattle, Washington this past weekend. So we had Democratic hopeful Bernie Sanders. He was there to give a speech to a crowd of about 12,000 people and he was literally bombarded and bum rushed by two hood rats from the Black Lives Matter movement. This whole situation is insane. It is making national news. Everybody's talking about it. I want to go ahead and show you guys the video footage here and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Thank you, Seattle, for being one of the most progressive cities in the United States of America.
My life matters! That I have to get up here in front of a bunch of screaming white faces to say my life fucking How dare you! How dare you! Get up! 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 Is do what people across the country are doing this weekend and have to How dare you! Since the day that Mike Brown was murdered and left in the street. How dare she call me a racist? I won't And we are going to set up me. You're going to call me a racist. We are going to have a moment of silence for How dare you! For four and a half minutes, which is representative of the four and a half hours his body lay in the street. And we'll start when everyone's silent. You will not tell me what to do, young lady. How dare you? I am not here at you. We're doing a four and a half minute moment of silence for Mike Brown as soon as everybody is silent. Speak my room, shut it down. Get out of my face. Get out of my face! We will begin the moment of silence for Mike Brown now. Why are we letting her Why is Not by her. What is your reaction to those protests? Well, I think it's unfortunate because, among other things, among other things, I wanted to talk about the issue of black lives, of the fact that the American people are tired of seeing unarmed uh, African Americans shot and killed. But there are other issues as well that we have to talk about, and that is the fact that the middle class of this country is disappearing. Almost all of the new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. And most important, we don't bring change in this country in terms of jobs that we need, education, health care, income and wealth inequality, unless all people stand together. That's what we've got to do. All right, so you guys just watched that video footage, and those two lovely women who decided to interrupt um, Bernie Sanders, their names are... Mara Rilliford and Melissa Johnson. They are both feminists. You know, they have very strong opinions. And on top of that, when they went initially to interrupt him, they had stated that they could talk afterwards. They refused. They want to talk before Bernie Sanders. And then they also held a four-minute moment of silence for Michael Brown, which the crowd was just sitting there booing. And then they went on to spew a bunch of bullshit for the next 20 minutes to the point where Bernie Sanders just, you know, after a while, he just couldn't even talk anymore. He was over the entire situation. So a lot of folks want to know my opinion about this and let me start by saying this Y'all know me. I'm not into politics whatsoever. I've been over it ever since the whole Obama thing in 2008 I'm just not into politics. I just I'm not I keep up with it, you know, but I'm not this is not a political channel I'm not one to say go and vote for this person or you know constantly talk about Donald Trump and and Hillary Clinton I, I'm just not into all that. You know, what I'm saying I read it on my own time. and That's about it but this situation makes no sense to me and it, you know makes me look at this whole black lives matters movement um sometimes i feel like they are purposely planting agent provocateurs okay and this is what happens when you let other people fund your movement i.e george soros and i've said this several times on facebook this is why i'm not a huge black lives matter person and people attack me all the time you know anytime i talk about black on black crime and i say something about you know but black lives matter though then people come at me sideways but Again, when I see things like this taking place, the movement just looks like a joke to me. And I have to ask myself, one, how did these women get up there? How did all these Black Lives Matter people end up being able to crash this event? This is somebody who is running for the presidency of the United States. Where is the security? 
Where are the police? How were they able to get that close to him where they could push him and yell in his face and do all this stuff and they weren't bombarded and bum rushed off the stage? So I almost feel like this whole situation was planted. These women played into every single black negative female stereotype they could play into. They were loud, they were ghetto, they had colored weave in their hair, they were belligerent, they were angry. How many more stereotypes could you fit into this entire situation? To me, I feel like this was planned. You know what I'm saying? I feel like these women did this on purpose and they're getting funded by somebody to do at the movement look even worse than it already looks and to also make black women look bad as well you know i just found this whole situation disgusting the fact that they're going off on bernie sanders when bernie sanders has been a supposed champion of black people he was there during the civil rights movement he marched with dr martin luther king and everything else so it's almost like you guys picked the wrong candidate to mess with why were you guys not crashing donald trump's event knowing that donald trump has said a lot of racist things towards mexicans and he's made a lot of little sly comments why are they not interrupting his events? That's because Donald Trump has top flight security and you're not gonna get within an inch of Donald Trump without getting your head took off. I mean, the whole situation to me is just disgusting. I don't agree with anything that these women did. Regardless if this was Bernie Sanders, if this was Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, regardless of who this was, this movement, he marched with Dr. Martin Luther King and everything else. So it's almost like you guys picked the wrong candidate to mess with. Why were you guys not crashing Donald Trump's event? Knowing that Donald Trump has said a lot of racist things towards Mexicans and he's made a lot of little sly comments, why they not interrupting his events? That's because Donald Trump has top flight security and you're not gonna get within an inch of Donald Trump without getting your head took off. I mean, the whole situation to me is just disgusting. I don't agree with anything that these women did. Regardless if this was Bernie Sanders, if this was Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, regardless of who this was, all I saw was total chaos and disrespect on that stage. They started cursing, yelling, going off on the crowd, being belligerent. To me, you made the Black Lives Matter movement look even worse than it already looks. A lot of folks have been calling out Black Lives Matters for some time now. They're saying that a lot of these people are, there, are just attention whores. They're just there for the cameras. Once the camera leave these same people leave they come and they start a lot of mess they start a lot of drama in a lot of these cities but when it comes to actually putting in work on the ground a lot of these so-called black lives matter people are not putting in any work on the ground so if these people are a representation of the black lives matter movement then it definitely makes me give that entire movement the side eye because all i saw in this entire display was nothing but disrespect what i got from both of these women is that they're nothing but attention whores and attention seekers i also went onto their facebook page i also went onto their twitter pages everything about these women make no sense on one of her old facebook posts that somebody posted on my fan page the girl is talking about how she's friends with another girl and they've been cool ever since you know back in the day when they were supporting Sarah Palin they're all but you're so gung-ho about black lives mattering but you're supporting Sarah Palin it's like the whole situation makes no sense and then these women are just looking for Twitter followers Facebook likes and we're belligerent that you know we don't know how to carry ourselves that we're disrespectful that we're bullies they perpetuated so many stereotypes and to me I find that the most disgusting part of this entire situation I'm gonna need both these girls to have several damn seats and I'm gonna need Bernie Sanders to hire some security because obviously these Black Lives Matter people are not going to let him go. This is the second time that he's been attacked by this same group and, you know, had his speeches interrupted. People don't need to be respectful. Black people don't need to go on your time table. Black people don't need to reach out to Bernie Sanders. If anything, Bernie Sanders should have been courting before he went to any other major city. He should have been courting BLM. And even at that point, uh, I haven't seen any politician that's done anything for black lives. So I don't have any need to, to meet with them, period. I haven't seen anybody really, really willing to step it up. So there's a lot of ways that politicians are trying to get activists swept up in rhetoric and sitting around the table and sitting around the table to do nothing but repress movements. And so I, the work that I do in particular is education work of agitating the political scene that people are having these conversations and that politicians are forced to do their own work and do their own reform um, because of work that I've done on the ground. Well, what would you say uh, to the people who say uh, that uh, that uh, that you're 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 hurting your cause? That like oh you're you're God. you're turning people off from your cause. Um. I don't give a fuck about the white gays. <laughs> I don't, and I never will. I don't. I literally don't. Like, pussy popping, don't give a fuck. Haters can keep rolling. I'm not respectable. We're in a fuss for session. Like, I don't care. I don't care. And the thing is, is like, 
the responsibility part is so huge on this, right? Because if we say that Black Lives Matter and all Black Lives Matter, literally all, even our tactics can't all be respectable. Because my tactics also have to be reflective of Black people's humanity. That the person who has education, their life matters. The person who doesn't, their life matters. The person who talks respectable, their life matters. The person who doesn't matter. The person who claps that, claps that, matters. The person who yells in your face matters. And so this whole notion that there are conditions on our humanity, fuck that. So I'm, part of the work that I'm talking about, agitation working with unrespectability, is actually being un- so unrespectable because A, our lives are on the line and I'm never going to privilege white feelings over black lives. But B, part of that is declaring that no, you don't get to put conditions around our humanity. And so really what I've seen as the the greatest outcome of everything that happened um, is it's been like other uh, other big moments, including the killing of Mike Brown, where you get to see within your personal networks and extended networks who's down, who's really about getting black folks free, and who's not. And it's made everyone show their ass. Mm-hmm. And so for me, that's really, really important because it's like I need to know who's with me and I know who's keeping me back and who's not really about that life. The situation is a mess. I see some black folks online supporting these two women and saying, you know, it's about time that, you know, somebody did something. But to me, this is not the way that you go about it. And I just can't support or condone what they did. I don't agree with it whatsoever. Anyways, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I want you guys to go ahead and leave a comment. What do you guys think about these women's antics and what they did, how they interrupted Bernie Sanders? Do you feel like what they did was a good thing? Or do you feel like these women were once again being attention whores and being really, really disrespectful? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. Hey YouTube, it's your girl Lovely T and you can show me some love by hitting that subscribe button, watching my previous videos, and following me on social media.